Hey folks, Quill18 here and welcome to another episode of our Unity 3D and Blender tutorial on how to make destructible objects in Unity. Right now we have our great sort of building block and we can destroy it by clicking on it, but it's currently just being replaced with a sphere, which is not what we want. We want it to be replaced with a destroyed version of itself, something of itself that's in pieces and can fall apart and look very convincing. So we have to swing back over into Blender for this. Now, uh, we could at this point create a new file. Uh, personally, I find that this next step is going to be easier. Um, actually, I can just get rid of this pane completely instead of minimizing it. I find this next step is going to be easier if we keep working in the same file. Uh, the file is going to start to get a little bit more stuff in it, so we're going to want to make sure to keep an eye on our scene view over here, but we should be able to proceed pretty effectively. So what we want to do here is we want to start tearing apart our cube. Uh, now, we don't want to get rid of our existing one, that's very important. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to do duplicate by hitting Shift D. We're going to duplicate our cube and just hit Escape to leave it in the same place. So now we have cube and we have cube 01. I'm going to rename this second one to be, um, I'm going to call it broken. Broken. All right, so we have cube, our real cube, and then we have the broken version of our cube. And to keep things a little bit more organized, I'm going to hit M and I'm going to move the broken cube to the second layer so I've got two layers now. The first one is here, and it has my actual cube on it. And my second layer whoops, is here, and this has my broken cube on it. Not that it's broken yet. And we're, but we're going to pull it apart right now. And the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to go back into edit mode. And basically what we want to do is we want to pull apart the sides. Um, because what we have to remember, these building blocks are, are not solid. In fact, I can give you an interesting demo here. Let's say I take this building broken thing as is and I use the self fracture fe uh, feature I'm gonna talk about self fracture later but I'll give you a quick demo as a teaser and hit this I'm gonna add some noise and I'm gonna hit OK now we've got a third layer and we have a version of our box that has been broken apart just shattered now this effect is great if your object is supposed to be solid, if it's supposed to be like a, a statue or a brick or something like that, or, or a rock face. It doesn't work for the building, but it, it's obviously pretty good here. Now, again, we're going to look more at self-fracture a little bit later. So if this is sort of intriguing to you, we'll, we'll talk about how it works a little bit later. But right now, I'm going to uh, just control Z a bunch to undo all these things and get back to, there we are, just broken and cube and two layers and perfect. So I'm going to go into the edit mode and I'm going to make sure that I've got the face selector here and I'm going to select, let's say the top face and I'm going to hit P and I'm going to separate this based on my current selection. I'm going to tab out and now you can see I've got an extra object. I've got broken and I've got broken.001 which is the top of the box which I can now move aside. So I'm going to take my box apart completely like this. So I'm going to go back into broken, I'm going to select one side, hit P I'm going to select the cap, hit P. I'm going to select the other side, hit P. I'm going to select the other cap, hit P. And then I'm going to take the bottom off as well. So now I have six variants on broken. These are all the sides. And then broken by itself is actually completely empty at this point. So I'm going to delete that. So now I've just got the six children, the six sides. Each side is a separate object. And there we have it. Now, this is still not good enough because of a couple of reasons. Um, first of all, these sides are, are paper thin. They have, they have no width to them whatsoever. They have no volume. Uh, the other thing is that they're actually one-sided. You can't tell here. If I go down to back face culling over here, now you'll be able to properly see the fact that the back side of these triangles do not get rendered. If I move this here, I can rotate around and see that you, only one side of it gets rendered. And this is the way that it works in Unity. Blender, by default, doesn't have back face culling on, so you can see the back side of it, but it's kind of misleading um, because things don't actually work that way. Uh, and in any case, again, it's got the problem that things are paper thin, and that would just look bad. We want to add some volume to these parts. We want to solidify them, and that's, in fact, the exact thing we're going to use. So I'm going to start with the top of the box, and I'm going to hit Z to go back into wireframe mode. Now over on the right hand side, I'm going to click on the gear or the wrench icon for the modifiers and I'm going to add a modifier called solidify. And I'm going to change the thickness to 0 
it starts off a little too thin. But actually, if I if I hold my mouse on here, you can clearly see that what's happening is it's actually thickening things up. If I hit Z to go back over here, for example, and move this out of the way, you can see there's a real, there's a height to this lid now. There's a thickness, and we want that. So I'm going to keep doing that for every side. Um, I, th I think there should be a way to apply this in bulk, but I haven't uh, figured it out, frankly. So I'm going to just do these one at a time. Quickly solidify, 0.1, do the cap. I'm just going to go around the whole thing, uh, solidify, 0.1. The copy button just makes a duplicate of it on this current object stack. It doesn't do a copy and paste. Um, there, the other side, add modifier. Uh, where is it again? Solidify, 0.1. And then the bottom again. We're going to solidify and 0.1. So now we have a nice amount of, of sort of thickness over here. And we could bring this in if we wanted to in Unity. If we wanted to, we could bring this in and we could use this and smash it apart. But as it is, it's not, it's not quite interesting enough. This is where, let's just save while, while we work so that we can always back to where we were. Uh, and in fact, if I go to texture view, you can see the textures are still there. And I can pull this aside. And yeah, the back sides are textured and, you know, hopefully they're textured the way that you want. In this case, this works fine for me. I don't mind that the inside is textured the same way as the outside. I'm quite happy with it. There is some overlap here with the edges and it can look a little bit funny. Uh, for our applications, I'm not gonna worry about that. It's, it works perfectly fine. Um, so, but we wanna make this a little bit more interesting. So now we're gonna talk about self-fracture and you may not have this button over here or if you can't see it, you can hit space and type self-fracture. Um, but you might not have that option. And what you have to do is, first of all, you have to make sure that you're running the latest version of Blender. I'm running 2.65, 2.65, which at this time is the latest, um, because cell fracture is pretty new. Uh, and if you, all, you still need to manually enable it by going to user preferences, look for cell, or click on the add-ons tab, then type cell and make sure cell fracture is checked off. Now this add-on will be available and you can start using it. So cell fracture just shatters something into little bits and pieces. Um, so we're going to start with this side here. I'm going to hit cell fracture. Now, if I don't change anything in the settings and I just hit OK, what it's going to do, and it is going to start a third layer. So again, the first layer is my single solid box. The second one is my box that's been pulled apart. And now my third layer is the where the fractured stuff goes. And if I click on this, you can see it has torn things into four chunks which I guess is interesting, um, but it's kind of boring here. And what we really, really want to do to make it super interesting is to go back into Cell Fracture and add some noise. This will sort of shake up where the edges are. All right, so we're going to stick with the default setting, except the noise of one, and we'll hit OK. There we go. Oh, that's why there was so much, so many extra bits, is because I had an extra set kicked around. OK, I'm really happy with this. This, this is the sort of look I want. Excellent. Okay, perfect. So let me, we're going to do that for every side. Again, I feel that there should be a way of doing this in bulk, but I've tried. If I select all and then hit cell fracture, it doesn't do what I'm looking for. So I'm leaving all the defaults. I'm just hitting a noise of one and repeating for all the bits. So let's do the other side. Oops. Do this side here. Hit one. Okay. We do the other end cap. Uh, cell fracture one. Okay. And then we're going to do the bottom. And now we should have them all done. Hit OK. And bring up the top. There we are. You can see in the inspector, we've got a whole lot of broken down bits. Now, so again, layer one is my totally solid object. Layer two is my walls that were pulled apart and solidified. And then layer three is my completely fractured cage. And I actually don't need any of this stuff that's left on layer two. This, this sort of thing with these walls, I don't care about this anymore. So I'm actually going to select this and delete it. So now the only th objects I have left are the totally solid cube and the totally smashed cube. And that's awesome.